So a lot of people have been asking about my control panel setup, so I figured I'd give a quick rundown as part of my mini mill build. So what I have here is I've got four DMM DYN4 servo drives. And at the top here, what I've got, let's start from the very top or work our way down. I've got a line reactor. It's going to have 220 single phase coming in. From the line reactor, we're going to branch out to a couple of terminal blocks. We're going to power a 24 volt power supply. This is a universal voltage power supply, so I can run it off of 240. Output is 24 volt. The 24 volt goes down to this black and red distribution terminal block set up here. I'm, I have one jumper missing from the terminal blocks here because nine of them are feeding power to everything down here and distributing power to the contactors on either side. The 24 volt power supply is also going to carry an emergency stop. Mesa does not want you to have the 7i76 on a switched supply. They just want you to run directly off the power supply. So that's why I have this one jumper missing. This one and this one are direct 24 volt to the 7i76 and it never breaks unless I unless I power off the power supply. The rightmost terminal block is 220 red leg, we'll call it red leg, and 220 black leg in and out. Out to the right side of the panel, the two breakers. Those two breakers then come down to two noise filters. From the noise filters, they go to two contactors. And one feeds this, mo or this drive, and one feeds this drive, both in 220. From the contactors, it branches off. It feeds the logic circuits, and I have each of those fused. This is all coming from the DMM recommendations. I, I followed their schematic to, to, the, to the number. On this side, because I'm using the NEMA 23 equivalent 57 uh, motors, and they don't like 110, or I'm sorry, they don't like 220, they want 110. What I'm doing is I'm going to branch off a red and a black over to this terminal block here. I'll have a red, a black, and then the green is going to supply neutral return. So each of these is going to power one drive. So one will go to here, the other will go to here. From there, same thing. Noise filters, contactors, and then drives. So pretty simple there. The 24 volt distribution, again, goes to each, each of the contactors. That's what triggers them to engage. When it sees 24 volt, they engage. From the 24 volt blocks here, I distribute it down to these 24 volt blocks here. And what these are, are my send and return for my alarm signals to each of the drives. So during operation, if any of the drives alarm out, the alarm circuit will trigger and it will go to, it'll go to an input. So if, it, it, if you follow their schematic from the drives, there is an input that we need on the 7i76. There's an output that we need on the 7i76. And then there is the orange and yellow are actually the internal drive send and return. This is just constant 24 volt, and this is common back to ground. This little block here is just a 
It's just a grounding location. Everything on the board, I tested for continuity to the panel itself, the body of the panel. And there's continuity on every single item here, which essentially negates the need for additional grounding wires. Because if you, if you touch a multimeter to this ground lug here, and you touch it to the board, it's already grounded out. So when the panel goes into the enclosure, I'll have a grounding location here. And I'm going to have a neutral, a neutral wire coming across going to this green block here. And again, that's going to feed my neutral return for my 110 circuits. The 110 circuits are also going to get branched off. Um, each one is going to power... Uh, an outlet on the cabinet side or it's going to power a um, it's going to power either way I'm going to power my computer off of the incoming 220 branching off and powering it that way um, more than likely the power supplies that I will be using are going to be you know computer bricks and I think computer bricks for the most part are Universal, so I might be able to get away with just using 220 to power the computer as well. So everything would be 220 aside from the left side drive circuit for each of the motors. And because I have one motor on each leg, I'm hoping that my uh, my one or that my 220 distribution is going to be nice and balanced. And if not, then I have to come up with another idea. I'll just have to double wire it off to. 220 in, 220 as much as I can, and then have a, another 110 coming in to power power this stuff. I'll see if it trips the breakers or not. So, these guys here, in case you're wondering, if you haven't seen my other video, this is a this is just my test for a cycle start, feed hold, and single block. Because I'm using a 7i76. 7i76 uses a 24 volt supply coming out to the switch. Whoops. <laughs> to the switch. Then out from the switch to the input side here. The first four inputs I have set up for analog I.O. And the analog I.O. can run potentiometers. So I'm going to use two regular old linear linear taper potentiometers possibly three one will be rapid override one will be feed override and one more than likely I'll have for spindle override I have spindle override tied into my PlayStation controller but it, it will be nice to have a little panel that holds everything so that's what I've got going on here so I've got these three wires are for the buttons, which now, <laughs> as you can see, it kind of kind of flew the coop on me. No big deal. Um, and then this output here and this input here are the ones that are feeding into the alarm circuit here and here. So that's basically it. That's really the overview of what I've got going on here. I got a couple of China TP relays just in case I need them for something. They're six amp max, 24 volt, uh, 24 volt trigger. So everything's pretty, pretty cut and dry. If anybody has any questions about this, feel free to leave me a comment, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, you might be wondering why I've got this guy here, this guy here. Hopefully, 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 I will be uh, tying this into the encoder input on the 7i76 to monitor the spindle status. So spindle, uh, spindle position, RPM, things like that. Hope, hope, hope I can get it to work. Um, that is my my plan is to be able to rigid tap on the machine so I, I think that I, I know that I need some sort of encoder feedback and I'm hoping that this is 
going to do the trick. So that's uh, that's all for right now. Thanks for watching. Please uh, please be sure to like and subscribe.